In this lesson, we'll cover customizing the user interface. So as you can see on my screen, Revit is laid out with a ribbon, several different panels on the ribbon, and different icons on each of those panels. Now, some of you may want to tailor this or change this to better suit your workflow or how you work in your daily activities. For example, maybe you don't like the order of the tabs on the ribbon and you want to rearrange those. So let's say I wanted to move the Systems tab to be first in the list before Architecture. To do that, hold down the Control key, and then hold the left mouse button down over the word Systems on its tab, and then simply drag it right or left, and then release the mouse button where you want to drop the actual Systems tab, and that's repositioned. Again, to do that, hold the Control key down, and then hold the left mouse button down on the tab, and then simply move it to where you want it and then release the mouse button. That drops the actual tab. You can also do the same thing for the panels. So on the Systems tab, I have an HVAC panel, Mechanical panel, Plumbing and Piping panel, and you can rearrange those. To do that, you do not have to hold the Control key. All you have to do is hold the left mouse button down over the panel name, for example, HVAC, and then drag it right or left to its new position and then release the mouse. That moves the panel to wherever you'd like to place it. You can also pull that panel off of the ribbon and float it. For example, if I hold the left mouse button down on HVAC and drag it down and then release it in the open area of my Revit window, I now have a floating panel. That panel has two borders, one on the right or left, that you can easily manipulate it and move it around the screen. You can also move it to a dual monitor too, or a second or third or fourth monitor, depending on your configuration. And you can pull as many panels off as you want. I can pull the mechanical panel off, and you can actually dock these two together as well as they're floating, just by dragging them to the right or left of each other. Now, to get them back on the ribbon, one simple way is to the right of these floating panels in that gray bar that appears. At the top of that bar, there's a little icon that'll allow you to return these panels back to the ribbon. So if you left click on that, these panels now go back to the ribbon to their previous position. And again, to drag them back and forth on the ribbon, simply just drag the actual panel to its new location and then drop that actual panel on that ribbon location itself. Now, some things you can do and can't do is change tabs and also change functional areas of the icons on the various different panels within the ribbon itself. Now, another area you can tailor or customize is the ribbon itself of how you view it. So right now I'm seeing all of the commands being displayed on the ribbon, but maybe your screen real estate is kind of thin. You need more space top to bottom. So to the right of the tabs, right beyond the word modify, you have two arrows, one up and one down. The up arrow lets you cycle through looking at the panel in its full mode, looking at just icons of the panel, looking at just the panel names, and then also just looking at the tabs as you cycle through that up arrow. The down arrow to the right of that lets you set any one of these specific modes. So for example, minimize the tabs. If I click on that, the entire ribbon is hidden and I only see the tabs for those ribbon elements. If you click on the tab, you temporarily see the ribbon and all of its panels and icons. And then when you click away from it, it disappears. To get it back to where it originally was, if you hit that drop down arrow and click cycle through, and then click the left drop down arrow or up arrow, that will cycle back through until you see the entire ribbon displayed. Another thing is what if you accidentally close something? or turn something off visually on your interface or in your screen. For example, the Properties palette on the left. If you happen to hit the X on that or the Project Browser below it and it disappears, how do you get that back? Well, to do that, go to the View tab on the ribbon and then all the way to the right, click the User Interface dropdown. Here's where you can turn on and off the various parts of the user interface. So for example, I turned off the Properties panel. So I can click on Properties, that turns that back on again. So you can easily turn on and off the different elements of your screen in this given area. Another area that you can customize is the Quick Launch Bar. That's all the way at the top on the left. Various icons are displayed for saving, opening, undo, redo, 3D views, some line weights, 
The drop down all the way to the right of these icons, that's the little arrow pointing down, allows you to turn on and off these pre-selected or system set icons or functions for this quick launch bar. To customize the order for which these are displayed, you can click on the Customize Quick Access Toolbar. This will open up the actual Customize Quick Access Toolbar where you can move up or down any of these functional commands simply by selecting them and then up arrow or down arrow reorient. And then if you wanted to place a separator between them, you could choose a separator to actually add that separator or X to delete that separator. Go ahead and click OK. That same drop down again, check marking or uncheck marking turns on or off any of these functional icons on the quick access bar. So these are just some of the areas that you can tailor or change inside of the user interface. One being the ribbon, where I can rearrange the tabs, the panels, the icons, minimize or maximize the visibility of that panel, how to turn on and off different parts of the user interface, and also how to customize the quick access bar.